Today we're looking at paper filtered espresso. Perhaps you've heard of this, placing a paper coffee filter in the basket below the puck. It would never have occurred to me, but since it's becoming a thing, I figured I ought to look into it thoroughly. I received samples from Good Brothers Coffee, which makes them out of Chemex white filters, in quite a few sizes. I'll link to their web shop in the description. I've heard of people using AeroPress filters, too, so I decided to be really thorough and test a heap of different paper filters, wondering if there's a type that best suits this application. We'll look at the shots and find out if that tells us anything. I'll measure the papers and put them under the microscope and let you know if I find any obvious differences that might predict or explain their performance. I've been pretty methodical, using the same coffee, grinder, water temperature, basket, dose, ratio, and shot times. I've done five of every configuration to smooth out the variables and tasted, if not consumed, all of them. I tasted every shot straight and as an Americano. I'm not into milk drinks, so you're on your own there. I've read online that paper can give you increased extraction yields, but the relevant question is, what are you extracting, not how much? There are numerous flavor compounds in coffee that we'll be pleased to avoid. So there's more or less extraction, and there's better or worse extraction. And better is better than more. So we'll shun the refractometer in favor of a more sophisticated instrument, my palate. Now settle in and we'll see if this improves my coffee machine or transforms it into a $2,000 AeroPress. Oh my God. It's like a miracle. Let's begin by watching a default shot with no filter. All of the settings will be the same throughout the video. I'll run through the specs which you'll find listed in the video description. A 16 gram dose with a pre-infusion of around 10 or 15 seconds until I get 1 gram out. Then I engage the pump looking for 30 grams out in 30 seconds, plus or minus 2 seconds. I've got the pump set to 8 bar and the water temperature set to 94 degrees Celsius. I'm using an ENV Lab basket that's ridgeless, relatively straight sided, and flat bottomed with an IMS competition screen. I used my Niche Zero grinder, which I've had for a long time and I'm very familiar with. I rinsed all of the filters with hot water before using them. Probably not necessary, but I did it for consistency's sake. So that was the paperless reference shot using this setup. Nothing at all remarkable there, which is how I like it. Now I'll test each paper, showing a characteristic shot, working my way from the thinnest to the thickest. First up, the AeroPress. The first thing we see is water. It's hard for me to imagine that it's not running down the sides of the basket and under the paper. However, keep in mind that when you do pour over, the first few milliliters are usually quite watery looking. This behavior is consistent for all the paper filters, as you'll see. The flavor was decent for straight espresso. Rather milder and lighter than a normal shot, but also less interesting to me. As an Americano, it yielded a pleasant but monotonous flavor. As I've said before, if you're making good espresso, it will make an Americano that competes with good pour-over. I wouldn't say that was the case here. A V60 brew using the same coffee tasted noticeably more complex with better balance. At least to me. The top of the puck looks fine. No evidence of anything weird going on here. This was true of every paper sample. I never encountered any mechanical issues except for the surprisingly watery looking start, and the two layer puck, which I'll show you later. To save time, I'm just going to show you the start of each test with captions. I'll post all of this information in the video description. I won't pretend to understand what the papers are doing. 
it's possible to describe flow dynamics with insoluble particles of uniform size and shape, as we can gather from these handy equations. But with coffee, we've got a hot, pressurized solvent forced through a semi-soluble bed of particles of varying sizes and shapes in which liquid viscosity, bed density, temperature, and pressure are all constantly shifting. And on top of that, espresso is not a strictly mechanical process, although some people treat it that way. There are myriad chemical reactions going on as well. So, espresso basket hydrodynamics are genuinely chaotic. The truth is, nobody understands what's going on in there. Nobody. Of course, there's plenty of conjecture and no shortage of Pop and J experts who confidently present their speculation and untested hypotheses as facts. Some people just have an emotional need to seem smarter than the rest of us. I'm not about to record myself tasting and making faces at the camera, gurgling with ornamental language about hints of lavender and bruised raspberries. There's more than enough of that going around. Different grinders might emphasize or mute certain elements of flavor relative to each other, but a grinder can't delimit the flavor profile rigidly. There are so many variables in play that you can usually work around your machine's inclinations so long as it's mechanically competent. There is no grinder or pair of burrs that simply decides how your coffee is going to taste. That's a fable. Grinder design and burr design influence flavor, certainly, but there are so many other variables. I wondered if a tapered basket would affect the watery start, so I tried using one a few times and the answer was no, it all looks about the same. There is a distinct layering effect on the spent puck. I would guess that the fines are being forced toward the bottom and stopped by the paper instead of passing through as they normally would and accumulating here. So to sum up the results, I have read that paper filters can increase soluble solids, and I'm not going to dispute that, but the fine particles, that is, the insoluble solids, have a major effect. When the only difference is the presence or absence of the paper, the plain shots, to me, were always noticeably stronger and more complex in flavor and richer in texture. Personally, I prefer that. When I want paper-filtered coffee, I bust out my V60 or my AeroPress. For metal-filtered coffee, I reach for my mocha pot or my espresso machine. Usually, I want either or. I'm not looking for something in between. But that's just me you might really like this hybrid method. I would say that it makes straight espresso a bit easier to like. Best tasting to me were the AeroPress, Chemex, and Hario boxed white filters. They're all different in thickness and appearance, but similar on the palate. So go forth and test. And yeah, enjoy. And remember, if it tastes good, it is good. Well, that's about all for today. Coming up, I have a deep dive into the EK43 wired gourmet style and a few more espresso topics that I'm sure you'll find fascinating, so keep in touch. Cheers!